<laughs> let's do this. Let's do this. Kate, thank you so much for making time for us. Um, it's nice to actually meet you. Yeah, yeah, same, same. And uh, the, um, the craziness of, of MIF is sort of underway. It has begun. Um, how's the reception been so far? Uh, yeah, pretty good, I think. Um, I try and uh, stay away from Twitter. <laughs> Bit, but, you know, I'm a masochist, so I always dive in and um, I take the good with the bad, the mostly bad, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> I find it kind of amusing, really. Um, but, no, I think I think we've had really good um, response so far and a couple of us have spoken to different outlets and, and they seem really enthusiastic about stuff. Um, I do the XR program as well and Triple R seem to be particularly in, in, interested in that, which is always great. It's always nice. Yeah, it's it's a completely loaded um program this year, and, and we'll pick through it in in a moment. Um, but I'm wondering, like, what sets this particular year apart from the rest? Is there anything um that excites you? Well, it's it's I mean, so much excites me. Um, when I was thinking, uh, when people are like give me your top ten, it's like oh, <laughs> I'm gonna give you fifty. Um, <laughs> but actually, it's it's interesting you say it's a really packed program because it feels really packed, but. In reality, it's actually a smaller program than last year um, mm. by something like 80 films. Wow. <laughs> wow. Jeez. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it, though. Like, I look through um, I look through the program and there's still a bunch of stuff I haven't seen. Um, there is, yeah, there's so much uh, stuff I'm really excited about, um, features-wise, uh, XR-wise, special events. Um, yeah, it, it's going to be really exciting. I think. And there, there seems to be a bunch of great stuff that's independent too. Like not, it doesn't seem to, to have that, like it, there's usually a really large component of stuff that's going to be coming out in a week or two after the festival. Whereas this festival seems to have a lot of stuff that this is going to be the only place to see it. Yeah. Yeah. And some really great, great things. Like one of the films I was going to um, raise is this fantastic Georgian film called Blackbird, Blackbird, Blackberry. No one's picked it up locally, but it's such a, beautiful film that I really hope people get on board to go and see because um it's it's about this uh older she's like late 40s Georgian woman she's lived this very independent life she's really formidable she doesn't really give a stuff about um societal expectations um and she finally has this like sexual awakening after this near-death experience and she said it's really it's a very small film it's a very subtle film but it's great to see that kind of story being told because it's not a you know your typical story but it's um it's really great awesome i hope people listening are sort of you know making notes as we go you know because that obviously that's one that they should put to the top of <laughs> yeah, their list. <laughs> yeah I, I really hope they do because I, I i kind of saw it not by chance i was always going to see it but i was a bit you know indifferent about it but it ended up being a real favorite for me how on earth do you keep up with the synopses and things like that with these films. Like if, you know, someone brings up a film, can you just need to go, yep, I know what that's about? Like we just had Monster Fest weekend and had six films in it. And <laughs> for the life of me when people went, what's on Sunday? I'm like, ah, uh, I can't remember. Well, but that's a bit different. The scheduling's different. Like if you ask me when a film is yeah. on, no, no, I, I just I couldn't remember the names. Like there's only <laughs> six films. And it also, it depends what time of day you ask me to, <laughs> as to how many I'm going to remember. There's... Definitely, it's happened to me in the past too where I'll look up something and think, what the hell's that? And then someone will say, oh, we screened that. And I'll be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. My brain doesn't work that way. Like it, I can be talking about movies and just pluck names out of the thin air, but if I'm in an environment where someone asks me specifically, I'm like, I go blank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <a> bit embarrassing. <laughs> I admire your ability to do that. Um, so that's one highlight. Is there any other highlights before I go through things that have caught my attention? Um, is there any other things you want to sort of highlight that people should really pay attention to? Um, yeah, I wrote I wrote a list. <laughs> um, one of my favorite experiences in the cinema this year was uh with my colleague Kate in Berlin. We both went to see uh Dustin Guy Defer's film The Adults. Um it's just a really beautiful um, kind of melancholy film about three siblings who, you know, they had a really tight-knit childhood but they've become estranged in their adult years and they come together when the brother uh, visits them. Um, their, their mothers died about 12 months previously and they're all kind of dealing with their grief or, or not. Um, and it's just, it's really, it's got a really fantastic um 
feel to it. The, the, the actors clearly have a really great rapport with, with one another and they really recreate that sibling kind of rivalry feeling really well. Um, I really hope people go and see that. Um, I really hope people go and see. There's an Australian horror film in the Night Shift program called Late Night with the Devil that I think is very cool. Yeah, that's fantastic. The Cam yeah. movie, yeah. Yeah, I hope people go and see that. Um, I think they've got a lot of local uh, interest and support, so I, I think that's going to be really good screening. Those mm -hmm. screenings. I, it's it's so weird that that, that guy, that, the guy that the, the star of it, David. Yeah. Is, yep. Um, guess Melchin or what? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was Never in. He, he was in. Um, <laughs> what's what's the the yeah. Classic. <laughs> yeah. He's got a. He's got such a great face for horror. I think. Yeah. Um, and the movie is, I mean, the movie is great. I feel like that that movie is, you know, all the stuff in um, in Guess, not in in uh, Nope, where mm -hmm. they have the flashbacks to the TV show with the monkey. I feel oh, like yeah. that whole movie is all that stuff that they just they didn't show you in Nope with the yeah, monkey. Yeah, it's an expansion of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's what we wanted Nope to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, see, come and see Late Night with the Devil. Awesome, like, awesome. Disappointed. Yeah, yeah, wicked. Um, there's some great Australian content. Like that's usually what I gravitate towards, and I'm particularly um big on retro. I love the older '80s sort of Aussie films. And one that's caught my attention this year that I have to bring up because I will be going along to see it for sure is "With Love to the Person Next to Me," oh. the 1987 film Kim Gingell. Like that era of Aussie film is where I'm at. Like you know, Boulevard of Broken Dreams, Heaven Tonight, that kind of stuff. I I've never seen this one. Um, I hadn't either, and I saw a restoration of it that Ray Argyle's been working on. Um, oh gosh, it might have even been late last year. Um, it's it's great. I think you'll really really like it. I'd love to hear what you think of it once you see it because yeah. it's such a surprising film. In fact, I learned about its existence after Melbourne on Film program was locked last year, and I thought, ah, oh, Dan, that would have been a really great. Film also because it's all filmed around St Kilda and I live um, kind of the St Kilda end of Elwood. Um, so it's all this great part of the city that I, I know really well, but back in that time too, like in the 80s. And Kim Gindle's great. He's just got that fantastic deadpan mm -hmm. kind of um, approach. But you him. still, you can you always just see a bit of that Cole Carpenter. Just, <laughs> just that, in, a, in a twinkle in his eye, it's just kind of there. Absolutely, totally, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, Ben! I was um I was watching um Ground Zero, which I'm going to bring up later in the show, by the which... way. But um, him and Mark Mitchell play two like cops together, and I'm like, all I can think of is them as like you know postman and you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fantastic comedy company for sure. And there's also um was it Mutiny in Heaven is the birthday party doco? Like I'm sure everybody's clamoring to see that. Yeah, I, I'm really hoping that people um, show up to the Asta for that just because it's got such a great connection with them having a residency there for a, a long time in the early 80s. Um, it's a great film. Like, it's it's almost purely archival footage, so it's a real curio for fans um, of the band and fans of the music scene of that time. Yeah, it's pretty great. I think that'll awesome. be a really great screening because Mick Harvey, at least I know Mick Harvey's going to be here. I'm not sure who else might around as well that's and really you, cool you've also got the the gadinsky doco as well which is a good kind of counterpoint yeah yeah kind exactly. of the other the other end of the spectrum that's like a, a kind of like a music gala i think um mushroom will be putting on a big show for that yeah. yeah, that's exciting. Uh, and like, I mean, it, it's once again, the Australian program is loaded, but then you've also got um, the Safi Faye retrospective, which really caught my attention as well. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, my colleague Mia um, curated that program, and I'm ashamed to say I've never seen any of her films. So neither I'm, have I. I'm neither so have I. excited to, to get along to those. And I would urge everybody to go along because it's such a rare screening they're quite difficult to track down they're quite difficult to screen so mm -hmm. it's, it's a pretty great coup on her part to get that yeah absolutely i did a little bit of a went down a rabbit hole looking at her work and i'm like wow how have i not stumbled across this before so very excited yeah yeah great and then and the um, other the yeah, other big on. retrospective is the the dario agento that's what i was gonna say retrospective, yeah. which is yeah well, which is uh very close fantastic. to my heart i worked very hard on that um 
And yeah, I'm so excited to see so many of them in cinema. Like there's yes. so many of them I've and only seen on DVD or um yeah. Uh, a little think... bit more, a little bit more poignant this year too, because Julian Sands, of course, is in Phantom of the Opera. Yes, it's kind of like a, a default tribute screening to him now. Um, yes, yeah, and and a, a real curio because I think a lot of people wouldn't have seen it. What's your um, What's your favorite Argento film? It's uh, <laughs> something that well, everyone has a different one. It's interesting because it's not in the program <laughs> only because it wasn't one of the ones that is part of this this. All the all of the um, titles that we're screening this year are part of the one restoration program that the Cinecittà did in Italy. Yeah. And this film they didn't restore this time because the Criterion um, Collection uh, restored it back, I think, in 2017. Uh, it's Inferno, and we actually oh, I you were going to say Dracula 3D. So I'm completely <laughs> by surprise. <laughs> Uh, which we screened last year. So <laughs> there you <laughs> go, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Smart. I was ass. very lucky to see it <laughs> in um, cinema last year. Inferno, which is what the second part of the Three Sisters trilogy. Yeah, yeah. Which um, that would have been uh, if if they had restored it. I think it would have been great to do the trilogy like Late Night at the Astor or something. That would have been a great thing. Totally. To do. Um, I'm, I'm I'm big into America. Tenebrae. That's that's where it's at for me. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. I love that I'm, film too. I'm yeah. so I haven't seen it. I saw it in the cinema once. We screened it when I worked at Acme. They did it at Freaky Fridays, but it was such a weird screening because the only print we screened a 35 mil print that we found in Italy. But because it was in Italy, they just dubbed the entire film into Italian. Oh, so yeah. my colleague Roberta, she. Um, she was is Italian. She did live subtitling throughout the, the film. <laughs> so you were hearing Italian with these English subtitles, even though you know people are speaking English in the film. So uh, <laughs> yeah. that's cool, actually. <laughs> for me, for me, I really want to check out the um the the was it uh, Do You Love Hitchcock? Oh yeah, yeah. Which I've never seen. I've never seen that film. And I'm I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated to to check it out to see what 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 it's all about. But also because we played um, Dark Glasses at Monster Fest a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and Cat of Nine Tales is playing. And I, I, the similarities between those two films mm-hmm. are, are, like, a pretty pretty kind of amazing. So I, mm. I definitely want to kind of revisit that to kind of to do that comparison. Yeah, absolutely. Cat of Nine Tales is great. Uh, um, I hadn't seen that before. Um mm-hmm. Starting looking into this program, so that was a real highlight. I, too. I can't remember Ben. Does does Cat of Nine Tails have a, a sexy swamp scene with eels? <laughs> no, not that I can remember. It does have a. It does have some sexy Carl Malden scenes. Ah, excellent. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> that's yeah. just all the scenes that he's yeah. just close yeah. ups of his nose, and then you're like, Ooh. yeah. Well, knowing know know the knowing know the circles that we revolve around in, like that Argento retrospective is probably going to go pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I've had some, yeah, had some great feedback from people so far. Like at the launch, a couple of people were really excited about it. Um, so yeah, I hope people come out for it. For sure. And the other thing that really caught my attention because I was a huge fan of his for a long time, still am, I guess, is Wim Wenders has a new film. Um, yeah, two. On my... two. Oh, yeah. yeah, two films. Yeah, yeah I only well, picked up on one, which was the um the Anselm one. Yeah, that that's that's really great, and that's in three oh. days. So that you know, strongly urge you to get along to that because it's. I don't know where you you'll see that again anytime soon, uh, but Perfect Days is also yeah. Perfect Perfect Days is the one that I'm keen to see. <laughs> we both picked up on different ones, <laughs> <laughs> and they're both they're both great. They're both quite different, but they're really great. Yeah, yeah. I just having, I just love his work. Yeah, having just come back from uh, from a, a, a European uh, Odyssey, I I I'm very keen to watch movies about the people who clean toilets. <laughs> it's such a big thing in in Europe. Like that's why you pay. You pay the person there because they clean the toilet right after you, which is great. Cleanest toilets in the world in France and Belgium and stuff. Just horrifying if you don't have change. <laughs> <laughs> you must be ex- you must be excited for like whatever upcoming you know, anniversary screen of Kenny they they might do in the future. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of the best. Um, and the other thing I wanted to sort of um, ask you about too is the regional screenings. I'm you know I'm really excited when you know festivals like this you know branch out and. There's like I can't remember the name of the cinema. There's a little sort of a boutique cinema in Geelong. I think the Pivotal or Pivotonian. Yes, Pivotonian. I'm dying to go to that place because it looks amazing. Now, what are some of the other um, retro or sort of um, regional centres that are the festivals at? 
Yeah, so we go to Castlemaine, you know, the Theatre Royal in Castlemaine. They're always mm -hmm. a really good supporter. And really quite fortunately this year, two of our Bright Horizons filmmakers actually live in the area. Like Mark cool. Leonard Winter lives in, I think, Dalesford or Hepburn Springs or somewhere like that. And um, Nura Nizari lives in Castlemaine. So we're going to, there's, there's films will screen there, but there's also going to be a regional talk um, at that centre too, um, which is pretty exciting because we don't always get to do that kind of thing, just getting people out to the regions. Mm -hmm. uh, we go to Bendigo with the Eagle Hawk Cinema in Bendigo. Um, I don't know if you know that place. It's very cool. It's like a, it's an old hall with a bunch of couches. Um, I've not been there, no. Yeah, it's it's really, it's very nice. It's a very cool um, little cinema. Um, where else do we go? That's <laughs> <laughs> sprung, out, sprung out on you. <laughs> have, yeah, see, the, um, have we, we've been to Mildura in the past. I can't remember if we're going there this year, though. Um, I think you, um, your website has a regional tab there that people can explore as well. Yeah, exactly. So get, get on your <laughs> <laughs> Up on the website. You know, that's how we should have started the, the whole conversation. Just <laughs> look it up yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, make sure you go to... Um, Miff.com.au uh, <laughs> slash regional. Oh, yeah, we're going to Wachuca, Warrnambool. Um, Amazing. Rosebud, Bright. We're going back to Bright this year, which is really nice. Bright is a beautiful um, centre. I went up there a few years ago when we did it. It's an old Masonic hall mm -hmm. that they use for their cinema now, so it's quite small, but it's it's really great. I love that part. Because you used to do the – you used to like there used to be post-Miff. There used to be like a kind of a travelling – yeah, thing that went around, but they were never uh, day and date with the Melbourne. Festival. No, it was always after, and we'd kind of divvy it up like who would go to which centre. Um, and that was the year of the merger. I went up to write to present the merger. Damien um, Callanan was there to give a Q and A for it, which was really fun. But it's quite nice. I think we kind of did this during COVID too because we were online. Um, it seemed like a really nice thing to keep our regional program happening at the same time as MIF. So we have this collective experience as, as a state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, you know, regional viewers can get on social media and feel like they're part of the conversation at the same time. Yeah, for sure. Um, something that's very fascinating is that cinema tickets in general are going up all around the place, you know, whether it's Australia or, you know, elsewhere in the world. But the value of your tickets is amazing in comparison to all of that. You know, like um, people going to IMAX to see Oppenheimer could be paying up to $65 per ticket, right? <laughs> so, and the fact that you've got all these fantastic packages, like people should really embrace and see as much as they possibly can. Absolutely. The more you see, the more you save. Like you can. <laughs> You're a good saleswoman. <laughs> <laughs> I put the pitch down perfect. <laughs> oh, <funny. laughs> Um, we will uh, we'll wrap things up in a moment, but I've I've asked Ben to compile his top five picks from the the program or the the calendar of uh, MIF, and I'm curious to know what he's keen to see, and I'm gonna I'm gonna run through mine, and feel free to comment on any as we go. But do you want to? What's your number? What we'll start with number five, Ben. What's your? Number oh, five? these aren't in any order, and I can't. We've kind of talked about a couple of them already. Same so, with mine. Yep. Um, but I can I can swap some out. Actually, I'm kind of keen to see the the restoration of. I don't even know if it's a restoration, but the Millennium Mumbo screening, oh, the, yeah. the, the the Taiwanese uh, film with Shi Shu Shu Chi Shu, I can't pronounce her name. Awesome. From Transporter, which I I was very disappointed isn't mentioned in her credits on the Myth website. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I remember that when that played originally at Myth, fifteen twenty years ago wanting to see it and then finally it took me it took me about that long to track down a dvd of it uh which i still haven't actually watched <laughs> so okay. now i get to watch it in the cinema again so it's great <laughs> awesome i'm gonna dive into that a little bit because i didn't pick up on that on the program um the carnival is one i'm really keen to see which is the documentary um that world fascinates me so i'd love to love to watch that one um is have you seen that one like is it um no, I have my colleague uh, watched that one, but that one's that one's um, fascinating me too because mm. I'm yeah. Is it, it's a I'm take it it's a carnival workers 
So I think it's it's a family that's like that that yeah. is you know in the in the circus industry and just the life of and the difficulties and and whatnot of the industry. So so right. So a good companion piece to Elvis Presley's Roustabout, <laughs> which I like to. <laughs> no, yes, Ben. <laughs> Okay, I won't be I won't be reusing that joke. There you go. <laughs> uh, what's your next one? Uh I'm really keen to see I missed it at Khan. Um and I saw it was playing there a bit and I I'm dead keen to check it out. It's Riddle of Fire. Oh yeah. I can't wait to see that too. I have not seen that. Which is looks great. It's like a these bunch of kids who uh who want to play video games and their mum sends them out on a on a mission to bring her back some pie and that turns into basically a, of this video game esque odyssey, uh, which, yeah, I, I'm, I'm dead keen to see. That sounds amazing. I'm going to, I'm going to bump that in place of Tenebrae because number three was going to be Tenebrae. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to make it that now. <laughs> I just included that whole Dario Argento retrospective as one, oh, radio. one yes. thing because I was like, you can't, oh, I can't pick between it. I won't that. physically be able to get to all of those. So I'll have to pick one. <laughs> Um, May, December, the one with um, Natalie Portman and Julianne Moore, I'm keen on. That's Todd Haynes. I love him and I love the sound of the story. Yeah, it's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, di- I did see that. That's high camp fun. <laughs> high camp, awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there yeah. seems to be, there's a couple of, because I noticed there's a, there's also the um, the new Catherine Brillet film. And, oh, she, yeah. I mean, she always does movies about older women having sex with younger, <laughs> younger men. Yeah. But there seems to be really- a bit of a... Did you ever find though they never really look like they're having a great time? No. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, that's good. Yeah, no, I, I firmly believe that Catherine Ryan does a great bit about um, why women don't necessarily want younger men because she's like, yeah, that's all I need, someone else to <laughs> to look after and and teach things to. Like I don't like I don't have enough to do. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Barbie in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, Leia, Leia Druk is all, all in on it, so. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. What else you got there, mate? Uh, well, one I'm pretty sure is on your list, uh, Glenn, is Blackberry. No, it's I'm not. It's not. You're not but, on your list. I'm no, dead I'm keen to see keen Blackberry. To. Yeah. It's so good. It's really good. <laughs> that, was, that was on my long list of things to recommend. It's it's hilarious. Um, if you're a It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia fan, and even if you're not, you will be because Glenn Howerton is really, like, tearing up the scenery in this one. It's He's really great. They're all great, actually. Everyone's I, great in it. I have to say, I'm really getting into this kind of modern, uh, you know, idea of these, you know, uh, business biopics. <laughs> like the HBO <laughs> used to kind of do them as made for TV yes. movies, like Pirates of Silicon Valley, Night Shift, Night Shift, and stuff yeah. like yeah, Late Shift, I should say, Late Shift. Sorry, yeah, uh, stuff Night like Shift that. So, yeah. a different workplace. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> 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 Um, well, my other two, just I'll run them off. Where we've already spoken about them was Mutiny in Heaven, and um, definitely with love to the person next to me. Like that is just like I can't explain how excited I am for that particular one. Oh, I'm so pleased to hear that. Yeah, I'm really. I hope people come along to that. What I love about chatting with you is how excited you get at the name of movies. Like I could drop <laughs> a name at the movie and you get excited, and that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and that's it's the great thing about working with people that are just as into it as me um and that's how i get keep things in my head because i can turn to my colleagues at any point and go i remember when we saw this and wasn't it great and we can just keep the memories going for it yeah all three of us sort of work in jobs that revolve around movies and watching movies and how do you differentiate work from pleasure like do you have to switch off and watch junk films or like how do you no such thing as junk films no No, you know what i mean ben we love the junk yeah, absolutely. I'm all in, <laughs> all in for trash, um, all the time. Really, it, it's nice to um, like, particularly watching a heavy, like Sergei Lesnitsky film or something. And then mm. I don't know, I watch Palm Springs or you know something that I know well, but it's trash. But it's good. Yeah, but it, yeah. Um, you need a palate like, cleanser. We say you trash affectionately, you know, one way or the other. I think TV is good. Like TV shows help too, even if it's just like a half hour of mindless whatever that's a good so what happens to your psyche when myth is all done and dusted you've wrapped up for another year you haven't quite started on the next year like where does your brain go do you have to take time out do you go away uh yeah i try and go away um and just 
not do much at all. I went to, I think it was Bali last year, and I, I really, all I did was sleep, swim, <laughs> and eat. Awesome. Um, and it was, it really was. And I kept thinking, why don't I do this every year? Like, it's such a perfect <laughs> Leveler. Well, really did you go to one of those like the resorts where you, you didn't you never have to leave the resort? You just and it's no, like it, it was a bit more low key than that. Like it was a, a much quieter town up in the hills, um, but also near beach. Um, uh, yeah, because I, I like to go walking, and so mm. I did that too. But yeah, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Well, um, we know how busy you are. Um, we will let you run, but thank you so much for the chat. We're very excited about this program and I can't wait to get along. Yeah, great. Awesome. And uh, take care. I hope everyone gets along. Go to that website. It's myth.com.au. Yeah, myth.com.au. Come see some films. <laughs>